So with Halloween coming up, I thought it'd be fun to make some props for around the house. And this week we're going to make the sign from Disney's The Haunted Mansion. All right, I'm Brandon, and here at the Make or Break Shop, we like to make things, but we know that breaking them is part of the process. And because of that, there's a lot of trial and error, especially when you're working with props that exist in real life. So this is actually taken from a bunch of pictures that a person took using photogrammetry, where you basically put all these pictures together, and you make this cool 3D model um, of the actual plaque at, I think it was Disney World. Also, you can grab the STL, the 3D file, right down below, and you can print it out on a printer. But in my case, we are actually going to see and see this out of MDF. So this is actually just three quarter inch MDF that I have cut out and painted. But to do that, we're gonna be using Fusion 360 in order to kind of clean up the model first and then do all the tool paths. Let's actually jump into Fusion and check out what this looks like. So before we even get into Fusion, we need to grab a file. So I saw this posted quite a while back, this was about three years ago. Let's see, Victor went and actually took 50 pictures of this guy and created a 3D model as a result. Then I brought it into Fusion. 360. If you've never used Fusion, uh, it's a great 3D modeling program. It isn't the best when you're working with really high polygon models like STLs. It's great if you're doing parametric stuff, but um, I actually found this wasn't a huge issue because um, you can insert these as a mesh, which I did. And instead of having to convert it to a body or something parametric, I actually can just keep it as a mesh. Uh, I jumped over into the manufacturing and then we set up all of our different tool paths. So, uh, well, I'm gonna get super deep into this. If you guys want a full tutorial on how to do uh, CNC stuff inside of Fusion 360, there will be a video linked up above as well as down below. But it's a quick overview. We're gonna be doing all these different tool paths. So we first start off with uh, an adaptive tool path. This is with a uh, quarter inch bit that is going to basically hog away a ton of the material. So we're getting kind of the initial shape down inside of there. And this is on a stock piece of MDF that is three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, and then from there, it's clean. It's doing another tool path where it kind of cleans that process up. But then the next tool path is it comes back and it starts to do a parallel tool path to really refine that shape. And this is just with a round over bit. Uh, it's a ball nose and it really smooths this thing out. And then the final tool path is actually a contour tool path. It goes around this outline. And then another cool feature that Fusion has, you can actually save what your piece is going to look like. And then you can bring it in as a mesh, even though the, the edges look a little bit goofy, but you can see how it's actually gonna cut out. So you can see those tabs uh, that we're left with. Then to see how long this is actually gonna take if we go over to machining time, um, you can see that it is going to be almost four hours. So we've got the tool paths made, but I'm gonna test this out on some, just this like super cheap pink foam that you can get from the big box store. I think it's gonna actually carve pretty good. And it's gonna kind of let me test out my tool paths with really not risking breaking a bit because this is super soft. And also can kind of see if everything is gonna work right before I put the wood onto it. So let's load up the CNC and start cutting. And speaking of Fusion, if you want to learn not only how to model in Fusion, but also how to use a CNC and cut out whether it's things like this or really anything else, I've got a couple courses. You guys can check them out right down below. Furniture design in Fusion 360, as well as CNC and CAD. In Fusion 360, this will take you from never having opened the program to all the way making some pretty cool stuff. I encourage you guys to check it out if you're interested, as well as there is a discount code that's gonna save you 20% off either or both of those courses right down below. All right, so the first pass is done. Now we are gonna raise this bit up and we're gonna put this guy on to do a parallel tool path. All right, so we just got done doing all the tool paths. First off, the foam doesn't cut as smooth. And the finishing pass, you can definitely see those step overs. Uh, and for the final one, we are going to dial that in a good bit more. Overall, this thing actually turned out pretty good. The one thing I'm noticing is kind of the V. I can do it. It's kind of hard to see. So I don't know if it's gonna look better when we use MDF, um, but we're about to find out. Obviously, I didn't uh, cut this completely out. I just kept it in there, um, just to get an idea of what, what's going on. So we are going to take some MDF. This is three quarters of an inch, which wound up being like 0.7 inches. 
dropping it back on the CNC and doing the exact same thing that we just did. Now, we're gonna run our first tool path and hopefully not break anything. All right, just realized that I forgot to adjust the depth of cut. It was going in way too deep, so starting to chatter a good bit. So uh, I need to go adjust that in the toolpath, re-upload it, and restart. Luckily, I was watching and it didn't break. All right, so I just ran the two passes on this guy. We did the 3D adaptive that took out the majority of material with a quarter inch bit. I didn't really record it because this is MDF and it's, <coughs> sorry, it gets super messy. So I had the dust control on the whole time, but you can see this actually turned out pretty good. So we're gonna do a contour tool path that we created earlier and just cut this out. And then we can move on to figuring out how to paint this guy. But so you guys can see, as you can see it actually turned out Ready, nice. All right, so now we just gotta take it out. All right, the contour did pretty good. The head turned out great. So yeah, that tool path that did a great job. So we added in a good bit of clear coat to this. It's just like shellac. And now we're gonna go back with a base coat and I'm thinking I'm gonna do like a green because that's the picture that I'm basically trying to mimic. And then I'm gonna come back with black and actually paint that on. I think I have a color that's close. If not, um, it'll still work for the most part. So let's do that real quick. And I'm just using, um, I'm just using spray paint. I didn't do like a sanding sealer, so um, you can still see kind of the MDF imperfections and stuff. But since we're going for an old timey look, this is gonna work really well. And actually it's already starting to look good. All right, so now I'm going in, I'm just doing just a black, really diluted water wash. And I'm trying to build out the shading with the wash. I'm really trying to save this because I think I've done a little bit too much, but um, this is super light and adding this in. This is actually my goal, and I feel like I got fairly close to it. So the actual text on that sign is a lot lighter, and um, I could do that, but I'd have to paint on the insides. And so um, I just kind of kept it one color, and then just painted the back black, and then we're gonna wind up putting a hook on this, and then hanging this up around the house. We don't have any good brick around the house, so we're not gonna get the full effect as the actual sign, but you kind of get the idea. All right, so we just hung that up with a simple hanger and it's now outside and just in time for Halloween. And if you guys wanna do something similar but with a different design, I'll include the link to the full tutorial on how to do the cam and the CNC stuff right up there. And until next time, go make or break something into your shop. See you guys. There's a trash truck.